I was willing to put in the extra work. Sure enough, it hits my back. Of course, they do it the right way. They don't take shortcuts, they don't make excuses. The glamorous part of the game, uh, Sandy, as you know, is winning championships. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Hey Bucket Live. I'm your host, Amy Glantz, and this week we have on a very special guest, UCLA head coach, Coach I. Thank you so much for taking the time to join us today. You touched on it briefly, but just um, something that we really like to focus on with, with Hey Bucket is, is the recruits and how these players, you know, can make themselves more appealing to coaches and, and to, you know, get recruited and reach their goal. Um, I remember growing up in Southern California, it was my dream and all everyone I played with in rec ball, travel ball to play for you and play for the UCLA Bruins. To, to the to the recruits. I mean, I think, yeah, I think there's some place for everyone. And what I love is that um, there are role models. There are true role models in the sport of, of what you can strive you know, to become. And, and there's so many teams and, and players and amazing talent um, across the, across the country and definitely here in Southern California. Um, but I think always keep your eyes on the bigger picture that we are a sport that doesn't have that true opportunity to be a professional athlete. So with all the travel ball and all the recruits and, and rec ball, everyone that's playing, they should play for the love of the game and give themselves an opportunity to build that those friendships, relationships, camaraderie, be challenged, be put themselves in a position. Sport. Athletics is difficult. You put yourself on a platform to succeed or fail. And, and it's through sports that you, it really helps you grow as an individual because it's not, everyone wants to be perfect and get hits, but it's your ability to manage success and failure is what sports is all about. And it's, it's not an easy one in our sport. We fail a lot. But being able to enjoy the process, enjoy your teammates, enjoy the challenges, put yourself in a position to figure out where you potentially could go to college, be on, continue to be on the stage, get a degree in something that could help you springboard into the real world. Those are things where there's opportunities right now in our sport, we are thriving more than ever. There are opportunities from coast to coast, from division one all the way down um, to, to two and three. And even if you start the JC and knock some academics out, and put yourself in a position to transfer, there's an avenue for everyone. I mean, I would love to say that everybody could come to UCLA. You know, I think as, as a young student athlete, I wanted that too. They were the champions and I wanted to be a part. So getting recruited <coughs> was one of the biggest days of my life, yet I had options to go to a lot of other places that you as a student athlete have to really consider. So I would say, you know, pick your top schools figure out how they would match up with you athletically, how they could help you academically. You got to learn about the environment and the culture and the, and the weather, all these things that are going to affect your experience. But college is an opportunity to get your school possibly discounted, to be able to help you, whatever that degree is, to be able to help springboard you into the real world, to continue to be successful and get challenged beyond the sport. Um, and then role models, once again, I love where our, our sport is, where everything is televised. You have access to be able to see you know, at the highest levels in so many different areas of, of the country. So being able to being able to understand that this is it's an opportunity and it's out there for everyone. Everyone may not be able to pursue their number one choice, but you have opportunities to go and get after that. So you, I, I think really preparing for what's best for you. How are you going to be able to enjoy a college experience that will help you beyond is the key for all recruits but it all goes back to you better love the game because when coaches are watching the game is going to challenge everybody and how you choose to respond is your defining moment not the hit or the strikeout or the pitcher that strikes people out or gets a hit it's we like to see how people manage the success and failure because it's going to happen and those are things that you have control over so if, so that's a big that's a big thing that i would i would hope for every recruit to be able to hear is you're gonna fail, but how you choose to respond is a big defining moment. And I hope that they always work on that. Mm -hmm. I, I I remember just um, just growing up and going through the recruiting process, one of the biggest things, and, and you, you briefly touched on it, but people would tell me, hey, if your career ended today because of injury, would you still want to attend that school? Yep. And I was like, oh, interesting. Like when you think about it like that, um, but, uh, just going back to recruiting, um, what is what is one of the biggest turnoffs I would say for for a college coach that's coming out to watch a player? Like, what's one thing that it's just it's just no no good? It just um, 
Well, for, for me, it's, there's no one specific thing. So I choose to describe things with a little bit more, um, I'll say, definition or clarity. So for me, I can only speak for, for myself, but I break it down into, because a lot of people will say effort and attitude, like just work hard and have a good attitude, which we all know those words and we know what they what they mean. But as an athlete, grinding, putting work in and, and not getting the outcome is frustrating. I get it. So I think... For me, I'll break it down into into three categories that I that I look for, and a big part of it is things. Once again, they have in their control, so their body language, just how they're representing. We talk a lot about how you walk to the plate, you know, and how you hustle out to a position, and how, um, you know, just the way you carry yourself is a big part of being a student athlete. So your body language is important, okay? Or even when they're talking to coaches or their teammates, you know, their body language are they shoulders back, are they standing tall, or are they or you know are they frustrated because people can make up stories without really knowing, just find your body language alone. So body language is one. Facial expression, I look a lot about, you know, their ability to have eye contact, eye contact with their coaches, eye contact with their teammates, eye contact, you know, um, in situations, but your your facial expressions, you know, there's sometimes where people get really upset and you can see it, you know, and we try to pride ourselves on not being able to show the emotion. We're, we can, you can have emotion, play hard, get, you know, but don't put yourself in a position to display that emotion that could be perceived as negative. And then I also, the third thing is tone. So just how they're communicating. You can hear how teammates are talking or players are talking or coaches are talking to to the players and it, it's positive communication, loud communication, confident communication, which we, we always look for. So if a player has that, they have a body language or they're playing with some confidence and you can see the game is not gonna knock their confidence. They have a facial expression where they're looking and they're eye contacting and you see that they're engaged and they have a tone that is positive and loud and confident already that player i would keep my eyes on just because they have control over the things that they should which will lead to greater success will give them the best chance to succeed so that's the leader like that's the standout you know um when i look at the field those are the things probably that i look for first before i even dive into who's supposed to be the best softball under your watch the bruins have never failed to qualify for postseason. They are always in the hunt. They are always making it to that stage. What has been your, I'm sure you have 1 million favorite memories, but what, what what's your top favorite postseason Bruin softball memory? Oh yeah, that's a, that's a crazy one. Cause there's, there's just, there's so many. Um, I can say in the history of UCLA softball, one of the greatest moments was, um, there was, I'll just give you a couple. Uh, we were in the loser's bracket and had to beat Texas twice, Kat Osterman twice. And she was at the time USA, USA softball player of the year and was Kat Osterman. And we beat her game one and then we had to come back to game two and we were losing one nothing in the bottom of the seventh with two outs. And we're able to, um, Tasha, Natasha Watley came to the plate and tied up the game. You know, bottom of the seventh, two outs, Natasha Watley, base hit, oh my gosh, epic. And then freshman Caitlin Bainey came up and hit the game winner back to back hits and we won and got to the championship. So it was it was one of those moments where we call it Bruin Magic, you know, like literally bottom of the seventh, down by one, two outs, and oh no, in two pitches, bing bing, we all of a sudden won the ball game and left them on the field. It was unreal. But the cool part, the next the next day we played in the championship versus Cal, who had knocked us into the losers bracket game one, and Kara Garrell, who just got inducted into the UCLA Half Hall of Fame, was through the the only nine hitting no, nine inning no hitter in college world series history so you know to lose game one and to come back in the championship and throw a nine inning no hitter was an epic moment so those those were big and then you can move forward to there was gosh there were so many big moments i think in the 2019 championship um game one against oklahoma you know obviously the championship game was big but that game one was so special because every single player on the bench got into the game and we were that when I you talk about culture and you talk about family, the girls were coming to me saying, "Please let so and so to have an at bat. Please let so and so." And as a coach at the World Series, that's not necessarily my focus. During the season, we're giving everyone opportunities, but we're in the championship game. It's not about letting everyone have opportunity, but that created a moment in, that we made history that everybody got into the game and got to experience that College World Series championship moment. And so that was a big one for me as a head coach, just feeling the power and, and the belief in, um, once again, the Bruin bubble culture was really, really strong. And then, you know, championship moments are big. I also, that, that also happened in 2010, that team was, 
was very, very powerful. And it's pulling together at the right moment and you can feel it. The, the Bruin, we call it Bruin magic because it's a strange place that we always try to get to for postseason where everybody is so crystal clear and bought in and heading in the same direction that you can feel it. I mean, there's nobody that's going to hold us back. And I think that as a coach, that's my job is to create it. And we're, we're fortunate that postseason brings that excitement where it's no longer about an individual. It's whatever it takes. And everyone comes together and um, plays self, selfish, selfless um, to do whatever they can to help the team win. That's, that's what I love more than anything about UCLA softball and postseason. Yeah, there's absolutely nothing like it. Like once once the Bruins are are just in the postseason, it's like all bets are off. Like, hey, who, who knows? It's fun. Bruin it's magic definitely might come fun. Out. Well, I think the best part about it is it doesn't guarantee any it doesn't guarantee that we're gonna we're gonna get a natty, but God, it gives us the best chance to. And that's what mm -hmm. will go down forever is the memories that we create and it's the feeling. In the dugout, it's the feeling. It's the feeling walking to the field, it's the feeling warming up, it's the feeling of of just true when we call, you know as a team coming together and being one, I mean, that's that's the most powerful part of UCLA that we've been fortunate throughout the history of the program to get that postseason experience. So there's a familiarity of what we do when we get there. And that's, you know, there's some people that haven't been to the stage before and it gets big and overwhelming and that happens, you know, and everybody learns, but the younger girls get to learn from the older girls that this is what we do. And that's a, that's a, that is a true, um, you know, strength of our program is the experience is big when you get to the end. We we have fun here. This is not something that you need to do more or try harder or get caught up in your own success and failure. It is whatever it takes to win and we enjoy this process. Um, but yeah, thank you for <laughs> thank you for recognizing that. Yeah, I mean absolutely and just and just being able to play on that stage, you know, yeah. at the women's college world series like you're, you're you're probably just all pumped up just thinking about it and, and you know with the season coming up again like what's what's the what's the motto for for this year's team is, is there anything different that you guys are kind of focusing on yeah you know, it's interesting like uh last well the covid year um the 21 season we had the covid fall and and i had really come together with a, a mantra that it was the year of fear that we were going to face everything and rise because there was just so much drama and and it was it was hard for everybody. I'm like, everyone in the in the world is is hard. So nothing is too hard because, and we're gonna be role models that we get to play softball. So we're gonna face everything and rise because we get to, you know, and um, it, it's, so this year we don't have a, I didn't have a really strong, like, this is what we're doing, but being being selfless has been a theme. And it's, so it, it's interesting, like I said, well, is that gonna be our theme? But it is, it's more action-based. They say it a lot. They're, for their for their team, being selfless is a big part of what this 2022 team is all about. We haven't really wrapped it up and tied it into this really, you know, fancy mantra just yet. But I love that the theme has been selfless all fall. Doing whatever you can, being a good teammate, being a good Bruin, doing it for your for someone else. Those things are always a strong foundation. So we'll see what we roll into in 2022. But if that's our foundation, um, I'm proud. I'm definitely proud. Who you, you have a you have a great mix of young and some crazy uh, some incredible veterans returning back to your squad. Who who's kind of poised for like a, a big breakout year? Any one of your players? Just um, well, we have some some like you said some experience that's coming back. You know, Aaliyah Jordan is a multi year All American. Um, Brie Perez is you know was recognized. We believe she's gosh she is one of the best athletes in the game um, as an All American, which is fun. And Megan Framo is gonna some, do some some damage on on um, in the circle and it was fun to be able to see Maya Brady a young Bruin just really get recognized because she swings such a powerful stick so those are you know the the core of it you know Kinsley Washington is always somebody that you know doesn't always get the recognition being on this all-star team but is such a, a strong um, leader and and constant in our program which I always she comes through big she came through in the championship moment and um, I just don't think she gets recognized the way that we value what she brings to UCLA softball. Um, I think we have, you know, a couple things. I think Kelly Gooden is someone who has done some great things for us because um, kind of a, uh, an, you know, an unsung hero, so to speak, as far as what she can create with her speed and havoc and what she does on defense. I look forward to her having a great year. We have um, so, uh, some freshmen that have gotten into the lineup. You know, Savvy Pola is somebody who is who has made some noise. I don't know, she can swing her stick and has championship experience coming from travel ball. Um, then we have, you know, our pitching staff, which is which is what's really exciting. 
Holly um, Azevedo is somebody that I really, I, I think she probably, if I'm ex probably am excited about one player is probably Holly. Um, she has an incredible opportunity. We got to keep her healthy, but I think more than anything, I know that she wants to do everything she can to shine this year and she's putting the work in. So if there's one, I really believe Holly's going to be a big factor for us in 2022. And then we have a, a transfer, um, Lauren Shaw, who has two years and she's in grad school and, and she is a, a very competitive feisty lefty that, you know, nobody has seen. So that's, she's going to be an exciting mix um, to, to the bullpen. And then Lexi Sosa is a, is a, a second year there. You know, we got to get her to, to just be always be healthier and stronger, but she, you know, she had a great fall of just being able to show what she can do too. We know it starts in a circle. So pitching, we got some veterans, we've got some, we're very fast, we're very athletic, we're very versatile. It's all the things that um, I really commend that Lisa Fernandez has created. She's in charge of recruiting and she's done a great job of, bringing in some great talent that are also very strong with being able to help the team. They're very team oriented players. And then in recruiting what's coming in, um, you know, I give her so much credit. She goes across the country looking for players that can really represent UCLA softball with class. And she's continues, you know, that, and that's a big part of who we are is people will graduate. Tasha Watley graduated, Kara Girl graduated, Lisa Fernandez graduated. There's so many big names, you know, Rachel Garcia and Bubba now have graduated but it now creates another opportunity for the younger Bruins to be able to step up. So um, we're fortunate. We still are, we're in a good position with this year's team and we're in a great position for the future. So, which is why I say I love coming to work every day because I'm just surrounded by excellence every day. Yeah, I mean, it just it just always goes back to the culture that you have created, you know, with, with, with the Bruins and um, at UCLA. So it's just so incredible that year in and year out, you guys are able to, you know, stay at the top. It's uh, it's, yeah. it's honestly been incredible to see. 